This week's rack is a lesson about climbing down the ladder. I apologize for the resolution. I had to zoom in quite a bit from the original camera, but it's still a great lesson, so let's get into it. Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to A Short Stop on Pool. If you enjoy my videos, be sure to like and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified about new content and leave a comment or a suggestion for content you'd like to see. For the break shot, I've got a parallel angle to a ball close to the rack. So this is a draw stroke, and I'm hoping the cue ball goes to the side rail and not up table. Yes, which is what happened. It actually hit two balls, it looked like, and then that draw sucked it back up to the side rail. Here I've got a choice. I do have a shot on the seven ball, but I'm real close to the rail, so it's going to be a little bit awkward. And then what does it lead to? What, what does that accomplish for me? I mean, I guess maybe I could roll it forward and get a window on the eight, and if I don't, I could shoot the five. So I look at it a little bit, just don't like that, and I've got to shoot this nine ball. Nine ball's a little bit touchy. I, I, I want to come back across table to shoot this ball on the side, and then, then I'm playing a half table game with very few balls left. But you can come back too far real easily and end up having to cut this in the side and go back up table and come around. So I'm really trying to keep the cue ball, you know, above this point, which I don't do, but I come somewhat close. Yeah, pretty close. So anyway, now I don't have to go up table and come back down. I can just roll forward. And what I really like about this rack is I, I kind of pick it apart. In other words, there's a real easy opportunity to shoot the 8 or the 12 and send the cue ball up this way and bump these balls and move them. And a lot of straight pool players might choose a route like that or bump them from this side or from above, but some type of bumping to open these balls up. And I don't do that. I, and I'm, I think that's classic straight pool is to kind of pick them apart and maneuver around and exercise precise cue ball movement. And that's what I'm doing here. That's at least what I'm attempting to do. So what I know, what I can see is that this two ball goes in this corner and I believe this stripe ball goes in there as well. I'm not sure. But the shot that I just shot was for the purpose of getting in this window for a shot on the two, knowing that if I don't get there, I can use the 13 to get it there. Now, from, the thir from this 13 ball, I can either bounce out and try and get that window, or I can just tap it in. Then I'll have a shot on the nine in the side, which, I, which is going to be very easy to get myself a shot on that two ball, and that's what I did. So that's thinking ahead and... and the goal of these last three shots was all about this two ball. All of it. All of those decisions were to get on this two ball. Because once I get that two ball, then I can maneuver around for the rest of these balls. Obviously, I've chosen this as my break ball. This uh, looks like the five ball, maybe. Now, it looked to me like right there I was attempting to come a little bit low on this two so that I could bump this stripe into this one. And that might manufacture a break ball and then I would have a shot on the six. Uh, but that didn't happen, so I'm straight in. Now, what I just did is I checked, and both of these balls, the seven and this ball, go over here. And I will pause the video for just a sec here because this is the, the critical moment. What I would use, used to do in this situation is pocket the, the eight, let the cue ball go to the bottom rail and up, because then I'm going to have a shot on either one of these balls into this corner pocket. And I figure, oh, no big deal. I'll make these balls, then I'll come around, grab these balls, and get these balls. There's two things wrong with that. First of all, it can be tricky sometimes to accurately transition from lower balls. Maybe I'll have to come two rails and come around and get back up above these balls. The second thing that's wrong with it is the balls that are below that are lower on the table are the best key balls for this break shot. Of course, that's assuming that I don't have a key ball into the side pocket above my break shot or some, some other type of key ball. But in this situation, these are the best key balls. Although one of these balls in the center of the table would be a better key ball if there was a K2 near the side rail so that you can get the correct angle to simply slide across into break ball position. But in this example, we don't have that K2 ball so I prefer one of the balls that are lower on the table. So I call this climbing the ladder. So you have balls that are low, 
middle, then a little higher, maybe a little bit higher, they form a ladder. Well, what's the easiest way to climb a ladder? Do you climb it from the bottom up or from the top down? Which way is easier? It's easier to climb a ladder from the top down because you're not fighting gravity. But it's the same on the pool table. So in this situation, you want to climb the ladder. And I've got a great example of this in my book. Uh, Chris Melling did a climb the ladder technique. He had more balls on the table than this. And he, he, he got the cue ball on the top of the balls and then worked his way down. So I'm going to shoot the eight ball, and instead of playing just to here, I'm going to come up here to the top of the ladder. Real hard for this to go wrong. I end up pretty straight in. I could, uh, if I get a different angle, I could bump the 14 over and then have a shot on the six. There's lots and lots of different ways to play this. As it is, I believe I have a shot on this stripe. Yeah, and I'm, oh, okay, and I just stunned the 14 that way. Now I have a shot on the six or the 14. So I'm not really climbing the ladder. I ignored the, the top ball, but I'm faced with the same decision. I could shoot the six right now. Or if I had ended up straight in on the seven, either into the corner or the side pocket, then it would be correct and it would be better to just shoot the seven and then the 14. But since I'm not straight on the seven, I'm still climbing the ladder. I'm still climbing the ladder. I'm going back to the top of the ladder. That's how you want to play it. And now these are my, uh, one of these is going to be the key ball and I need to use the other one these two balls, I need to use the other one to tra transition to the cue ball. So either of these could be a cue ball, but you want the cue ball on this side. You want the cue ball on this side. You either want to be able to go to the bottom rail and up to break ball position, or you want to be able to go past your break ball and kind of spin up for position. What you don't want to have to do is draw the cue ball two rails and try and get over here. That's the worst route lowest percentage route. So at this point, I've got a real easy shot on the six, but I can't draw back, I'm gonna hit the 10. And the tendency, what I used to try to do, is to shoot the six and go forward and give myself an angle on the 10 so that I can shoot the 10 and come two rails this way. And if you have to do that, that's fine, but it can be tricky to get the right angle and how many times did I try this and I end up stuck to the bottom of my brake ball and now I can't draw two rails. So I choose here what I call the Efren Reyes pinch shot because he's famous for doing this. I'm going to shoot the, the 10. And I know that I can't, here's the shot line to the 6. I know that I can't cut the 10 and hold the cue ball below this shot line. That would allow me to either stun up here or go to the rail and up. I know I can't hold it there, so this is a pinch draw, so I'm using a lot of left English, and I am coming two rails out of this corner. I want to come as deep into this corner as I can and come out, and I know I'm going to have this angle on the six ball. This is just a soft pinch draw, a lot of left English, real soft. And I know I'm going to have this angle, and so the only route now, well, you could try and draw it two rails, but as I said, that's a terrible a lower percentage route to go. So here I'm just judging the amount of right English that I want to put on the cue ball to bring it up here for my break shot. And that's what you want. One rail position, you only have to focus on one thing. How much right English am I putting on it to get this break shot? So that's climbing the ladder. Now I have a very acceptable break shot, but it is an outs or, uh, outside angle. So I'm not going to have as much power going into the rack as I would hope. It would have been so much better if I could have gotten the cue ball to here where I have even a slight inside angle. The rack would have opened much, much better. Make the best of it. Just hammer this and try and get some balls open. I didn't hammer it. That was more of a controlled break shot. So I would have had a really tough shot on the five somewhere or possibly the eight, but this ball uh, came down and I have a, a back cut. Uh, I, that I can make it and I think I can go into the rack. So this result, this poor break shot with a huge cluster in the center of the table, that is the result of having this outside angle, even though it was a slight outside angle. I needed to work harder to get the cue ball just past my break ball to here so I had an inside angle on that break shot. If I, and that's the difference between a short run and a long run. If you want to keep your runs going, 
You need this inside angle so that you get more energy going to the rack and get these ball op balls open and have more options. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you're new to the channel, here's a link to my full Rack of the Week playlist. And new players will love this video about aiming and the half ball hit.